Hola, my friends. Alrighty. Here I am. I've got my handy dandy little micro saw blade out. I, I love these photo etch blades. Not only are they literally razor sharp, but wow, I, they just cut so nicely. They really honestly do. I love them. I love these beautiful little micro blades. It, it really honestly took very little effort. It seems like a lot, but there really isn't to get these carburetors off. Starting off first off with this nail board to go ahead and you know get it level across the top of the motor so I don't have one carburetor higher than the other. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull out my 80 grit uh, sanding stick. The reason that I'm grabbing out my files here is because I got to take and do, uh, you know, kind of file in if I can some notches around the base area where the carburetor is going to go. I said it before in another video. If you ever use an adapter plate, they're all the feet stick out and there's indentations in between. And I'm going to try my best, you know, with a few different files here. After hand filing for about five, almost ten minutes, I realized I ain't really getting very far. So, let's bring out the big guns. I got the uh, power turned down low to speed. And this way I can go ahead and take it and just very gently take and uh, sand out the little area that I need. It's a hair big. But when I'm all said and done, you're not even going to notice.
be honest with y'all, I wish they made a smaller sanding drum for Dremel, but I've looked and looked and looked and I can't find one. I've got some rotary bits, but they're a little too aggressive for what I need to do. And yes, you saw right, and Butterfingers! Okay, after putting in the indentations I needed, it's now time to take and kind of just deburr the edges so I have a good, clean surface. It doesn't look all frayed and nasty. Just a touch more because I noticed on the back one was just a little bit of an angle so just making sure that they're absolutely just flat with each other right there the reason I'm doing that on the bottom of the engine well there was a area there that when I first painted it didn't quite cover and I got a what we used to refer to as a pinhole in the paint. Okay, after I had removed, you know, a couple of these stupid looking cross members and everything and kind of using my sanding uh, bit as best as I could, I've got some cleanup. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm just leveling out these uh, frame rates. You know, easiest way to say it. You know, I've got some mistakes that I made where the bit got a little bit too aggressive. Luckily, to be honest with you, I, 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 and I said that luckily, I, it's all the luck in the world that it didn't really gouge it too bad or just accidentally cut through it. The reason I'm using a, a 80 grit for this is because simply put to y'all, I'm going to be using a regular automotive filler primer. So I'm not really going to worry about any scratches that the 80 grit is going to put into this plastic. Would I do that on the body of the vehicle? Oh, no, 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 no.
Okay, here is the four pan that I went previously, measured, laid out, and cut. A few little burrs, but, but like the sign says, I forgot my glasses, so I had to hold it closer to me. That's why it's off screen, and I am so sorry. I apologize for that. I am trying to do my best. My new stand that I picked up for painting the car body, which you can see the car up there is sitting on right now, came with four of these awesome little clips. You're going to see them here in, in just a few minutes. I still need to trim a little bit just to make it, you know, look good, make it fit a little bit better is all I'm working on right now. If you're not a smoker, I am so sorry, but I am, and my workbench area really is not that big, so that's why they're sitting right there. If you look, you can see I intentionally made it about uh, 30 seconds of an inch wider on each side than the frame. And that is so I can take and once it's solidly glued, well, I can go ahead and fix it. So here I am now, I'm picking up my, to me, a extra thin quick setting and gonna start to go to town. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but to be honest, I think I might have found a little trick using this to me uh, uh, extra thin. You, know, you see how it came off? Well, I found out with gluing some other items that if you take and go ahead and use the, you know, cement like that, when you go to put on fresh cement in an area like that, it's got a great capillary action and pulls it right in. But there, that's what I was telling you about. Those are those really nice little clamps. I love those things. And there we go, putting the glue on. And that's where the capillary action takes place. Now, this video is 18 and a half minutes long, which you already saw, and I was only able to use one of the videos that I created. Actually, what this, this is a string of like six videos. I still got five more, which is good, because as soon as this one is all done and I post it, 
next video is we start getting put together. Believe it or not, these are the smallest clamps that I have other than these little metal ones. And I wasn't going to take and stick, you know, six or eight of them all the way around that little area. That would have been silly. And as always, my friends, thank you all so much for watching. Please, 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 like, share, subscribe, ring that bell, and comment. I love y'all's comments. Thank you.